Hi guys! With today's pet portrait, I was experimenting with some watercolor techniques to see what they would do with the ink tents. For the background, I began by painting the background with just clean water, and then I dabbed different colors into a few spots so that they would meld together. While the background was still wet, I sprinkled salt onto the paper. As the ink tents dried, some of the color collected around the salt crystals, forming a spotted texture. As I started in on the fur, I wanted to create a picture that had a lot of color in it, yet still had it be clear that the dog's fur was white. This time, I tried to build up the colors more slowly by mixing the color I wanted on my palette first, and then painting on the shading of the fur instead of using the ink tense pencils too early. I had been really excited about the wet into wet technique for getting a soft even color. So for much of the underpainting I brushed water onto the paper first and then dabbed watered down pigment in afterwards. I had really liked the effect that I got using this technique um, however, it has one limitation for fur in that once the puddles of water dry, it tends to leave a ring of darker pigment around the edge of where the water dries. It's not really a bad thing if you're going for a more watercolor painterly look, but if the goal is realism, it might be better to do wet on dry. So using wet paint on dry paper instead of using wet paint on wet paper. Once I had a basic idea of where I wanted my shadows to go, I started to add more and more vibrant colors, deepening the tones that I already had laid down. I wanted this to be colorful but still obviously a white dog, so it was a bit of a challenge deciding how vibrant I could go and still maintain a realistic look. I wanted to make sure that the background was reflected in the dog's fur, so many of the colors I used for the shattered portions of the dog's fur are the same colors that I used in the background. I really wanted to limit the use of the Inktense pencils, so I continued to build up the fur texture using the paintbrush. It was a little scary since, in general, I felt that I had more control with pencils than with paintbrushes, but as I've gotten used to using the paintbrush more, these days I feel like I can have just as much control with a paintbrush and even get like a thinner, more detailed stroke with a paintbrush than with a pencil. It just takes practice. At the time of doing this piece, I was just beginning to feel more comfortable, but I hadn't really figured out the proper techniques to use, so it was more of an experimental process. There are a few areas on this piece where I do use the pencils earlier on, such as in the eyes, the darkest part of the nose, and the rings on the collar. The pencils work really nice for getting a dark pigment right away, whereas using the paintbrush would take several layers to get as dark as I want it to go. At this point, I'm just using the pencil to sharpen up those edges, deepen the um, pupils of the dog's eyes and then I go over with water just to darken up that color a lot more than what I had before. Where you see me take the picture away, I set it up at the other end of the room and look at it from far away to get a better idea of how the picture looks as a whole. Often when you look at your work up close, everything looks fine, but as soon as you walk away, you realize that the details are lost because they aren't distinct enough, shadows aren't nearly dark enough to give the figure form, or you might notice things that stand out more than you want them to. You should always look at your picture from a distance as you work on it because ideally, people are going to be hanging this picture up on their wall, so it will be predominantly viewed that way. <laughs> um, for this, I had decided that my shadows weren't dark enough and I needed to lighten up the right side of the dog's face. I finished off by using the colors of the background to sharpen up the, um, the edges of the fur around the dog and used the Inktense pencils to give more texture to the dog's fur. I used a white jelly roll pen to bring out a few highlights and add highlighted parts of the fur. And that's it for this piece. 
I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I'll be posting a new video every week, so make sure you to subscribe so you don't miss out on my newest time-lapse videos. See you next time!